long time no see. Precious the Sun looking at it. Today we're looking at four of the best free browsers that aren't Chrome, Safari, or Firefox. Let's get into it. Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Adrian Reddix, and let's see if I still remember how to do this. The first one is a Chromium-based browser called Brave. We discussed Brave before on this channel a long time ago, but Brave is Chrome, but more features, right? Has all the basics as far as a private browser, things like that. They offer a VPN that you have to pay for, but they offer something that uh, makes it a more valuable for people who really need it, and that is a Tor browser. And what a Tor browser is, it's called the Onion Router. It means it has a lot of layers. And you use this when you don't want a government or something to know where you're going. It gives you that protection that if you're in a tyrannical government or if there is somebody out there that wants to know what you're doing, it gives you that layer of protection. This is editing, Adrian. Uh, I just wanted to say that if your safety is at risk, please use the actual Tor browser. Um, this one just makes it a little harder for people and websites to do it, but if your safety is absolutely critical, just use the official Tor browser. That's all. So you can um, protest or look at things, right? It, it gives you access to what they call the dark web, right? And there is some nefarious things on the dark web, but a lot of things are, it's a way for some people to communicate in regimes that are a little bit oppressive. I'm not gonna name any in particular, but Tor does that. So Brave has that built in. You don't have to, uh, if you're familiar with how the web browser works, it's a very easy way of using Tor. The reason I like Brave is it uh, blocks a lot of ads. If you're not a person who likes seeing ads all the time, it preemptively blocks ads, even on uh, YouTube videos. Don't watch this on Brave. Watch this on Chrome. Don't watch it on Brave. I'm just kidding. Um, so if you want a browser that uh, blocks ads, so it really takes safety to a next level, Brave is a really good Chromium-based browser that, you know, you should give uh, a look at. The next best browser is Microsoft Edge. And I hear you. Oh, it's if you use Microsoft Edge when it first came out, it was atrocious because it was trying to straddle the line between a modern day browser and when and Internet Explorer, specifically 11. It didn't do a good job. The first iteration of Edge was terrible. You'll get no argument from me. It was bad. But since they made it a Chromium based browser, it is one of the best. It's the one I use personally every day on this computer right here. It takes that Chromium experience and it, they add their own flavor to it, right? You can still have some functionality of Internet Explorer because sometimes with some of these older security cameras, if you're into security cameras like I am, you still have to interact with these cameras through a Internet Explorer, through an Internet Explorer browser, right? And because of that, it does have that functionality that you can still use if you have programs or you have devices that need that Internet Explorer still has that. But it takes that world and Chromium and makes it really good and fast browser. It's my favorite browser that I use. And you can uh, connect your Microsoft stuff to it. If you haven't given Edge a chance since the early days, do that. Because what they did with the Chromium, and when I say Chromium, I don't know, I don't know if you guys know that, but Chrome, um, Edge, Brave are based on a open source browser called Chromium. And they it's open source, so companies can use it to put stuff on top of, but the underlying browser is Chromium. It's kind of like a cake. Let's just say it's a vanilla cake. Well, vanilla cakes are, it's, it's a cake, but you can add like chocolate frosting and sprinkles and it becomes something different. It's still a vanilla cake, but it's a chocolate vanilla cake. You can add strawberry icing and maybe uh, pecans. Now it's a strawberry pecan vanilla cake. It's still cake, but you added your own stuff to it to make it something different, but it's still cake. So if you haven't given Edge a shot since the early days, you're missing out. The next one is Opera GX. Early in the year, I had a top five software for 2023 and Opera GX made the cut. This browser has gamers in mind. 
What you might not realize is browsers are very RAM hungry, very memory intensive. Besides the integrations that it has, the biggest features in my opinion that makes it stand out is the ability to control how much resources the browser uses. You can adjust the RAM down and different other resources you can adjust and make sure that you have enough resources for your other things. That it that it's not just uh, being consumed by the browser, right? So if you're running a very intensive game and let's say you have a Discord up and you're streaming, you know, you don't want the hog to be the web browser to take performance away from um, your uh, streaming and your game, right? So you can control what resources that the uh, browser can use. You can optimize how you use it. It also has different integrations with like Twitch and Discord and things like that. So it'll make, it makes that easier to do. All in all, as far as streaming, and um, well, as far as game plan and streaming, Opera GX is definitely optimized to help you take your streaming and your game into that next level by not hogging resources. And the last one is a Firefox based browser and it's called Waterfox. Waterfox takes a couple things that Firefox does well and adds their own little spin to it. One, its biggest claim is that it doesn't store telemetry data. And what telemetry data is, think of it as um, data about your system, as far as logs and stuff like that. It only takes the logs that it needs to tell you what version it is and for updates. Firefox takes a little more information than that. So if you don't want a, if you don't want a browser kind of retaining information like that, definitely Waterfox is for you. Also a big claim is that it uses older version of extensions. Sometimes extensions don't make it to or it is not developed for a newer version and Firefox will not run some extensions sometimes. It runs a lot of extensions that are still pretty good to use but just didn't make it over to the new versions of Firefox, right? So you can use some of your old favorite extensions. And to me, the whole not having your telemetry captured by a browser and the whole um, using older extensions is a great thing. What browser do you use on a day-to-day -day basis? Is it Chrome? Is it Safari? Is it Firefox? Is it one of the ones on this list or is it one that we hadn't even talked about? Let me know in the comment section below. Guys, that's it. Thanks for joining me. It, it's been a while since I've made a, a, a video. It's been, um, it's been, it's been rough. I'm not gonna lie to you, mentally, I've had some challenges, but um, I'm on the mend. So let's uh, hope for a more consistent schedule. And I thank you guys. Have a good one.